You know, I, I really love it is that roughly two weeks now into recording these devotionals and watching it grow and develop and making choices to <laughs> don't record inside and record outside and deciding to you know, adjust, the, not adjust the contrast or lightness or darkness or whatever, and yada yada, you know, the technical issues. I'm still amazed at how fun it is when you're using the least of things to accomplish the most good that you can that you know, sometimes just the, the humor of having to re-record something over again because it got deleted makes it, I think, more real on this ministry of emotional than maybe some others that are professional or edited or practiced or coordinated or set up in such a way that, oh, you know, wow, I could never do something as good as that. You know, and one of the things that I want to encourage people in sharing these with you is that you are really encouraging me more than I am you because this helps me to read my devotionals. This helps me to spend my time with God that this isn't about you. <laughs> it's about me, me, me. No, <laughs> but in part, it is about you. And I would encourage you, if you are so inclined, that God would inspire you to go and do your own, would be to record, to sit down and talk about the things of God and how he's working in your life, that you might share them with your family member, with a loved one, you might record something to somebody you don't know. And in that way, you would be presenting the gospel. You'd be presenting your personal relationship. You could get off your chest all the things that you thought you could never say to another person. And you could do it simply through technology. Wouldn't that be awesome if the next viral video was you sharing Jesus? <laughs> don't. Quote me there. <laughs> I would not want to be a viral video going to millions of people. Uh, I have a hard enough time just reviewing every now and then these that I share with just a few people that I know and the ones that, well, there's a bunch of people that check out Emotional. But the point being is that when I am gone, God forbid, you know, that I'd gone sooner than I should be, but if I if I am gone, then these still exist in the place where those who choose to participate in reading their devotional have someone who can just, they could relate to and talk to and see and maybe get a perspective on what God might be saying to them, which is what devotional is all about. In Spurgeon, it's always fun to twist and King Damoth the words to find the meanings and to explain it in such a way that it makes sense because sometimes I know that not everyone's vocabulary runs the same place as Spurgeon goes. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Luke. It is fondly imagined by some that it must have involved very special privileges to have been the mother of our Lord, because they supposed that she had the benefit of looking into his very heart in a way in which, he, which we cannot hope to do. There may be an appearance of plausibility in the supposition, but not much. We do not know that Mary knew more than others. What she did know, she did well to lay up in her heart. But she does not appear from anything we read in the evangelist to have been a better instructed believer than any other of Christ's disciples. All that she knew, we also may discover. Did you wonder that we should say so? Here is a text to prove it. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Remember the master's words, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. So blessedly does this divine revealer of secrets tell us his heart, that he keeps back nothing which is profitable to us. His own assurance is, 
If it were not so, I would not have told you. Doth he not this day manifest himself unto us as he does to unto the world? It is even so. And therefore we will not ignorantly cry out, Blessed is the womb that bore you, but we will intelligently bless God that having heard the word and keep it, we have first of all as true a communion with the Savior as the Virgin had, and in the second place as true an acquaintance with the secrets of his heart as she can be supposed to have obtained. Happy soul, be thus privileged. You know, Spurgeon, at the time of his living on the earth, was dealing with, in his denomination, the conflict between the Catholic Church and the papacy and the overriding perspective that the doctrines of man have invented that there is some special extra anointing for Mary being the mother of Jesus, that while Jesus in his flesh, God prepared a body, a lot of times they like to say that, you know, Mary is the mother of God, and while that is not accurate, she was the mother of the Son of Man, because God gave up Jesus, his godliness, in that when he came, he became a man. And while he was still God, <laughs> it would be a big stretch to call someone the mother of God. So, in those ways, it's just simply that at that time, the people who did not have the scriptures to study and to read and to know for themselves followed the teachings of men. And in a lot of ways, they did the best they could with what they understood at the time. And sometimes people got carried away. And to this day, they still do things that if for them it works and they have a personal relationship with God, praise the Lord. But we who have been given a personal relationship with Jesus have been told that everything we need to know, we need not find in other any other person, but in our relationship with God himself. That we are given all that we need in scripture. We are told that we can know the secret things of the Lord as he's revealed them to us in the word of God. And there is no one else greater. There's no one else lesser. There's not the pastor who is more wise than you are because his wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit, as does yours. There is no one that is of a greater magnificence and grace than you are because they are just as big a sinner as you are. You see, God equals the playing field in the sense that grace abounds in all of us and that he doesn't want us setting up kingdoms and kings and people over us because he told us that we should be the servant of all. So if you would be greater, then you would make yourself lesser that you might serve everyone because in that you'll find there's a great joy in not being the leader but being the one who behind the scenes causes the leader to succeed. And so while men need people to look towards and look up to, you don't need to be so because you have Jesus with you. So you look inwardly to the God who is within you, which is Jesus, that Emmanuel, him dwelling in you, that as you read and study and learn the word of God, as it applies in your life, as you daily seek his face, as you open your ears to hear him, he walks with you and talks with you. He shows you things that are too marvelous for you to even share with others because you have that personal dynamic relationship with God. So if you think that Mary or maybe Jesus' brethren, his brothers or his sisters were even greater than than we who have not seen him but we believe then let me tell you this there was a time where they came to prevent him from going and doing what god told him to do and he said know ye not that i must be about my father's business would you stop jesus <laughs> i don't think so so in some respects you know we forget that people are people whether they be the mother of Jesus, or whether they be the brethren of Jesus, or whether they be, like you and I, friends of Jesus, because we're no longer servants, that we're still human beings, and we're still fallible, and we still make mistakes. But all we need to do is to be in relationship with Jesus like Mary was. And when we are like that, 
then we can find and follow and believe in the one who saved us. And that's all Spurgeon is saying. You can know all you need to know for righteousness, for holiness, and for godliness in the personal relationship of Jesus today. That's all you need to do, is to walk with God today.